Across the country, Ugandans are witnessing an uptick in violent crime. The last annual police crime report published 10 months ago highlighted a spike in violent crimes such as homicides, thefts and child-related crimes. There's no word yet on the 2018 and 2019 reports, but going by recent media reports, it could likely outstrip previous years. In 2017 alone, at least 24 kidnap cases were reported, of which one person was found dead, 15 were rescued, and 8 were reported missing. The frequency of kidnaps, however, picked up throughout last year to this year. Globally, Uganda does not feature anywhere on the list of countries where kidnapping is a virulent form of banditry. However, the kidnap of an American tourist, Kimball Endicott, in April, which was covered widely, put the country's safety record under the microscope. Internally, kidnappings for ransom had become known as merely an intractable violent crime. Endicott, according to multiple reports, was picked from a group of four tourists while on safari drive deep inside Queen Elizabeth National Park in Kanongo District. She was taken along with their tour guide, Jean Paul Mirenge. In Chihihi Township, a drab outpost with a patch of unpaved roads in whose backyard the American tourist and her guide were kidnapped. Residents narrate with colorful anecdotes of what they saw and heard. It was a spectacle as nearly the entire country's elite security, with barrels of their rifles, descended on the area for the search and rescue operation. Yet, in the same district which borders the restive Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo in southwestern Uganda, the frequency of kidnap for ransom cases probably outstrip other parts of the country. An insidious practice where cartels and neighbors prey upon victims and scour the grasslands to snatch their next victim has left families shattered. Many of the kidnap incidents here go unreported because locals are preoccupied with finding money to pay for ransoms. Two weeks after security operatives had nearly combed the entire Kanonga in the search for the American tourist, 17-year-old Ronald Niwagab, a resident of Rukara village in Kihembe Parish in Kanyantorogo sub-county, which is adjacent to the uganda diara Kong border, was kidnapped. In a punishing world of stark contrasts, Niwagaba was left abandoned without the aid of police or security personnel. His fate lay in the hands of his captors or the ability of his family to pay the ransom in this part of the country where locals prefer silence to confrontation. His captors initially demanded $3,000, which is about 11 million shillings. Two days later, Niwagaba was released after his family paid a ransom of 3.5 million shillings, which was agreed upon with the captors. A visibly traumatized Nwagaba was kidnapped together with his 10-year-old brother on the Congo side where his family, like many residents here, own tracts of land where they cultivate. Unlike other victims, the youngsters were not assaulted, but the two days of deal while in captivity will torment them for years to come. His ordeal notwithstanding, Nwagaba, like most residents, has to go to the garden to forage, a spitting distance from where gunmen cornered them. According to Nwagaba's father, Enos Miriam, he first reported his son's kidnap to the UPDF detached in the area, who referred him to police in the neighboring Kihihi town. Here, he was referred back to the village. Kanungu, a quiet hamlet, sprang into prominence during the Chiwetere County massacre, where hundreds were killed in an apocalyptic fire. Most recently, a debilitating drought in 2017 nearly brought the district to its knees. Kanungu, which is neighboring the eastern part of Diara Congo, a sanctuary of roaming militias, has placed those who inhabit areas around in harm's way. 
heavy fighting occasions the insecurity which often drives away Congolese into nearby districts. Last week alone, 130 Congolese fled a militia attack and escaped to Kanongo. Yet, barely an arm's length across the border into Congo is a vast expanse that residents from Kanongo cultivate. Gad Tweheo counts himself lucky after being freed by his captors. They initially demanded for 9 million shillings, but after haggling over a period of 10 days, they settled for 2 million shillings. This is River Ishasha here in Kanungu district that separates Uganda right at the edge where I'm standing and the Democratic Republic of Congo right over there. There's probably nothing peculiar about a river separating two countries, but in spite of the insecurity and the plethora of rebel groups operating in the Congo, residents of Kanungu still cross into the Congo to forage, where they are routinely kidnapped for ransom. But there's more to the story. There are several factors influencing kidnaps in Kanungu. They range from the porous borders, laxity on the side of Uganda's security, the marauding militia groups in Congo, and cartels comprising of Ugandans and Congolese who have turned kidnappings into a lucrative business. We also learned that Ugandan men who marry on the Congo side by fail to pay bride price are routinely picked up and their families ask to pay what's due. Business deals gone bad on the Congo side too has sucked in these cartels that are hired to take revenge. Shafiq Sekandi, who chairs the Kanungu District Security Committee, revealed to NTV what is likely driving the kidnappings. The, the government of Congo is not in full control because the, the structures are not on the ground. So the militias seem to have taken over control. And you see, militias don't work. For them, they abduct people. They time people who are going to the markets and they demand for money. And they, in the process, there is total insecurity in that uh, North Kivu, the eastern part bordering with Uganda, in the districts of uh, Kisolo, Kanungu, Kasese, Bondiwujo, and in Toroko. About 15 kidnappings have been recorded since the year began, though others are not reported. He also revealed that the population explosion has driven many Ugandans to seek for land across the border to cultivate. And you know Kanungu, Kisolo, Kabale, the population pressure is also high on land. So when someone hears that there is cheap land being sold across, he will buy, okay? After all, these are brothers and sisters and in-laws of the same uh, dialect. So in the process, you find Ugandans who go to dig in Congo become targets of the rebels, of the militias, of the kidnappers. Charles Yonasan was abducted by gunmen from his garden and taken across the border in Congo. According to his brother, Dabshens Tumasime, they beat him up severely to the extent of shattering his buttocks that necessitated a medical operation. I'm torturing him and to make sure that we hear the, the screams when he's being tortured, they would make sure that his phone is on and being used so that we can maybe sympathize with him and we look for money very fast. We were not able to raise the money very fast, so he was kept there for like 14 days. Then we, we reached a an agreement, they demanded four million, a box of chief waraj, and uh, a, bat a solar battery which was on his house. Dabshens told NTV that despite his brother's ordeal and the kidnap of several other residents, the circumstances still compel residents to cross into Congo. Uh, a mile to buy land in Congo. So they, they, they think land in Congo is very fertile, so that's why they have to go there. But is it really fertile? Yeah, it is fertile. The, yeah, the yields in the Congo cannot be comparable to yields in, in Kanung here. Yunasan himself is convinced that one of his neighbors works with the kidnapped cartels in Congo and gave him away. I was a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a Yunasan has since sold his garden and promises that he will never return to Congo to cultivate. But some residents believe that not everyone is a viable target unless one has money. 
This is why some victims are kidnapped at the Ugandan border and moved into Congo. Secondly, admitted that though there is a rise in kidnap cases, no amount of sensitization can persuade residents to either stop crossing into Congo or going near. Yes, the, 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 the trick is that Ugandans very early in the morning they go into Congo, okay, to cultivate, and they go in a, a group, and then they uh, in the evening around four that's when they move back, but they don't stay there permanently. They don't build there. Even if someone has three acres, they don't put up even a hut there because they know that place is what? Is insecure. So it's like jumping into some place which you know is not safe. You dig, dig quickly, plant a few banana uh, uh, plantings, then you jump out. Tracking kidnap cases in Kanung is hard as many cases go unreported. Even when reported, police often does nothing largely because some of the victims are found in a foreign territory where only Congolese authorities have jurisdiction. Across the country, police says 19 kidnap cases have been reported since the year began. Police spokesperson Freddy Nanga told NTV that ransom is the main driving factor behind the spread of kidnaps in the country. That shows there are probably challenges that are financial related and people want to use every opportunity uh, to, to, you know, uh, to get money. Edward Timanyira Sylvia Oldison, whose throat was slit in Chemamba village in Liantoni district, is one of the victims whose death remains a puzzle. A grieving Timanyira revealed that the key suspect in his son's kidnap and murder was a man he often attended church with. The abductors of Timanyura's son first asked for 500,000 shillings and later agreed to a lesser sum of 250,000 shillings, which was paid through mobile money. In retaliation, residents raised down the suspect's home. Others vented frustration over the way police handled the matter. Timanyura accuses police of shirking its responsibility and letting his son die. Unlike Timanyura, John Sempwengo, also a resident of Liantonde, is like that one of his cabinet minister friends dispatched a team of investigators which led to the rescue of his son. Kurwala bechifana nchi omu anoyo, sina chila lache na damu, ni nkwata sente ni kulache, ni nzimua, ni mua kumilionezi, ni mugamba, esa tusizirina. Kazi na gamba nedo msaja mwongele sente, ni mugamba kari, gwenyamba, buoreto mwana wangi, nesa tungenda ziku wagwe mungami ya timutade wa ntugu wangi, na gamba kari nze mwana amuleza. In this part of the country, kidnappings have cast a pall over the life of many communities. Consumed by fear, most communities are only waiting when the next victim will be picked. Frederick Mosisi, NTV Panorama.